Builder's Notebook, an organizational tool to help, I keep getting the title wrong, I'm sorry. It's an organizational tool and support to help you care for others. This is a planner for anyone who is a caregiver, doing any kind of caregiving. And today we are going to be talking about the routines and schedules section of the notebook. Now this is one of the sections of the notebook that I think really has to be customized for your particular situation. The routines are more of the little habits or routines that the one you're, the person you're caring for has, the little things that make the day go better. You know, if you're caring for a baby, how you deal with them going down for a nap and getting up from a nap, how you deal with a child who has autism because they like things very structured, how you deal with an elderly parent who always wants to eat the same thing for lunch. Um, all those kinds of routines that make it easier for you and others to care for your loved one, to provide the consistency that that person needs to feel safe and secure. The schedules, on the other hand, are a little bit bigger picture. You know, they're basically a look at how the day goes, what happens when, where those routines fit into the course of the day. So the, the routines and schedules section is broken into routines, and schedules. So if you have your notebook, go ahead and turn to the tab that says routines and schedules. If you don't have a notebook, you can find out how to order them. Down lower on this page there are some links so you can go to your bookstore and get it there and support your local bookstore. Um, there is quite a, a, a bit of information here on the how-to page, the instruction page that goes along with this section of the notebook. Um, and let's just turn the page and look at a few of the different daily routine parts that you will use. And you won't use all of these. You will just use the ones that really pertain to your particular situation. There are, if you have someone that has communication issues, maybe you're dealing with a baby or a child with autism who can't communicate or an elderly person that isn't able to speak very well. Um, it, there's some little boxes where you can talk about how, how they do communicate and then just room for you to put some notes about how to, make, how to communicate with them effectively. It has room for devices if, if you have a child that uses an iPad or something to communicate. You can put all that information there. Same for the environment, and this is just simple things, so especially if you have someone who's very sensory sensitive. What temperature do they like things at? What sounds bother them? How do they like the lighting? What smells might bother them and be a trigger for, for behaviors or meltdowns? Um, then there is there are some pages for dealing with medications, you know, what your schedule is for when you do meds and how they're set up. Um, any other assistive devices that you use, um, you know, any shots or that kind of thing, or oxygen pumps, a ventilator, anything related to that. There's rooms for personal care. How do, what's their toileting routine in the morning and their hygiene? How do they do dressing? Um, are they able to do any of their grooming on their own? Bathing, showering, what, what are the restrictions or what's the routine for that? There's another page that goes on to mobility and travel. What do you need to do if you're taking them somewhere? Can they get in the car? Do they need their walker? Uh, do you have to call a bus and have, have the bus come? Anything that, that is a mobility issue for your loved one can fit there. Then there are some pages for feeding and eating. What meal times are like? Does their food have to be chopped or pureed? Are there foods they don't like? Any of that can go in these pages. Um, how, to, how to get them to sleep. What's their sleeping routine? Um, naps and at, in the evening. Then there are some sections just for likes and dislikes because that can make life so much easier if you know what a person likes and doesn't like. Or you can have that ready for whoever's going to come in for the evening while you and your spouse maybe go out to dinner. It'll make it easier for that, um, that person that's doing the care. Uh, and lots of rooms for, room for things like uh, what do they like to read, what's their favorite exercise, what TV shows, all sorts of things. Just look through, fill out the ones that are important to you. Then it goes on to some pages that offer schedules. And there's several different kinds of schedules. There's one um, that goes hour by hour through the day, speaking of which is like a Monday to Friday. What's their basic schedule Monday to Friday? If that's the kind of schedule you like to fill out, you can do that. Um, then there's another one for an hour by hour for weekend and holidays, if that works better for you, if you need that. Then there's just one that's more of a weekly schedule. Basically what happens on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it's all on one page. 
you can look through that schedule thing and make it work best. You may not want to use all of them. It may not be very helpful or you may just want to put everything on the monthly calendar. It depends on the situation you're dealing with and how much detail you need to go into. So that's it for the routines and schedule page. What I find and have had people tell me is that once this section is filled out, a per, the, the major caregiver, the primary caregiver, feels much freer to call someone to come in and either someone that they hire, you know, an in-home caregiver who can come in and pick up and keep things consistent for a few hours so the primary caregiver can go out, or if you're dealing with a young child situation and you and your spouse just need to get away for a little bit, it makes it much easier. You feel much freer because all that information is written down and you don't have to, you know, do two hours of work beforehand getting everything ready to be gone for two hours and you've kind of lost any value of being away. So that's what this is here for, to free up caregivers to be able to go and get the stress relief and the time away they need so they can come back and be better caregivers and to know that the care being provided by someone else is consistent and will, be, uh, will not upset the, your loved one's daily routine and make it harder for you when you get back. So I hope that you are able to take some time to get this part filled out and then that you're able to find somebody to come in and care for your loved one for a little bit so you can go out and have your nails done or get your hair done or uh, just go sit in a coffee shop and sip some coffee or go out to a movie, whatever it is you need to do to relieve your stress so you can come back and do a better job of caregiving. I really admire what you're doing and I hope you're finding this series helpful. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them in the comment box at the bottom of this page. And I'll be back with you again next week to go through the next section, which will be, um, this is more related to caregivers than to the person they're caring for. We'll talk about the Bible reading plan and the prayer guides.